Hey guys, Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're breaking down and installing the D2 Racing Pro Series Lowering Springs available for all 2015 through 2023 non-Magna Ride Mustangs. Now you guys should be checking out the D2 Racing options if you'd like to achieve a pretty aggressive drop with a progressive rate lowering spring, keeping that slightest amount of rake for the front end. So the big feature here will be that aggressive drop paired with the progressive spring rate all at a very affordable price point. Now let's start with that drop because let's be honest guys, that's what owners care about the most and honestly, I don't blame you. Now the D2 Pro Series Springs will lower your S550 1.7 inches up front and 1.8 inches in the rear. Now this is certainly one of the larger drops in the spring category and the most affordable spring to get you that low. Now that aggressive staggered drop will still maintain the slightest bit of nose down rake, which I feel looks great. And at the same time, will clear all stock wheel and tire combinations, along with most aftermarket setups with ease. Now guys, this is one of those times where the customer image section is going to be your friend. Feel free to check out the dozens of before and after images on the five star rated springs to get a better sense of what these things will be all about after the install. Now the D2 springs will be made from what is called 55 chrome silicone steel before being finished off in this purple powder coat. Now no info on specific spring rates here guys, but D2 does tell us that these are a progressive rate spring, meaning they will offer a slightly softer initial spring rate before firming up the harder they are pushed. Now this is gonna give you the best of both worlds essentially, nice comfy on-road experience while cruising, and one that will help reduce body roll when you start tossing the car around in corners. Now finally guys, the D2s are backed by a one-year warranty in case you run into any issues or defects. Now your price point again will live right around that $250 price point, making this one of the most affordable springs in the category for starters, uh, but also the most affordable option that's gonna offer the biggest drop for your ride. So when it comes to lowering your car, most bang for your buck, I would say the D2 options here are certainly gonna be it. Install is gonna get a strong two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter here, according to the site. Take at least four hours to complete from start to finish. Certainly gonna need a spring compressor on this one, guys, uh, if you are gonna reuse your factory struts, or even if you plan on adding aftermarket struts at the same time. But now to give you a better idea of just how this one will go down, let's head out to the shop. Let's check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown. The tools you'll need for this project are a ball-peen hammer, a half-inch drive impact gun, a 15 16 an 18 millimeter, and a 15 millimeter impact socket, a trim removal tool, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 7 8 pass-through socket, quarter inch drive ratchet, a deep 10 millimeter socket, a 3 8 drive ratchet, a six millimeter Allen bolt wrench, and a pry bar. Hi everyone. Today we're installing a set of lowering springs on our Mustang. So let's get started with the uninstall first. Now once you've got your vehicle properly supported, either on a lift such as we've got, or on a set of jack stands with a jack, and you've got your tire removed, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the brake caliper and the brake rotor. To do that, we're gonna use our 15 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts in the back that hold on the caliper. All right, so we've got one 15 millimeter bolt here at the bottom and another one at the top. We'll go ahead and use our, our impact gun and our 15 millimeter socket and remove those. Now with those two bolts removed, we'll just slide our caliper out and let it rest on this support beam right here. And we just grab our rotor, slide it off, and put it out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our sway bar link from our strut bracket. And to do that, we're gonna use a 17 millimeter wrench right behind the bracket. There's a nut and our 18 millimeter socket. Now once you've got that nut off, you can just swing your sway bar link out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the clip for our speed sensor. 
simply by using a trim removal tool, getting behind it, and prying it out. We'll get the second one up here at the top. Again, we'll do the same thing. We'll get our trim removal tool underneath it. And just pry that out. Now we can go ahead and remove the two nuts holding our strut to our steering knuckle using our 1516 socket. Now, once you've got your nuts removed, we're going to go ahead and flip them around and screw them back onto the studs, making sure that the flat flange piece of the nut is lined up with the end of our stud. Like so. Now we're gonna use our ball peen hammer and drive that stud out enough so that it's free from the splines. All right, now that we've got it free from the splines, we'll go ahead and remove our nut from both of the studs. And then what we can do is push in on the strut and then remove that top bolt. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom one. Now we can go ahead and remove the top nuts on the strut and go ahead and pull it out. So we'll use our 15 millimeter socket and remove these three top nuts. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to reach underneath and grab that strut and hold it up while you remove that last nut. Now you can just reach out, go ahead and slide the strut down. and pull it out. All right, now at this point, we're gonna need our spring compressor so that we can compress this spring to remove this top nut on the strut and place our new one in. So we're gonna go ahead and slip this into our spring compressor. All right, we'll get our arms locked into place. All right, now we can go ahead and use a 7 8 pass-through socket and a 10 millimeter socket to hold the stud here. And we'll go ahead and remove this top nut. And once you've got your nut off, you go ahead and just pull your strut down through the bottom. Now we'll go ahead and get our new spring compressed with the top hat from our stock strut so that we can go ahead and get our strut installed. All right, now we'll go ahead and slide this on up in there.
making sure that the end of our coil lines up with the end of our insulator. Go ahead and install our nut. And now we'll go ahead and tighten it down with our pass-through socket and our 10 millimeter nut inside. Now we'll go ahead and release the tension on our spring. And remove our strut from the compressor. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our strut through the top of our strut tower and secure it with the original three 15 millimeter nuts. Now we'll go ahead and tighten those down with our 15 millimeter socket. Now we go ahead and put our steering knuckle back inside our lower strut mount. And we'll line that up and reinstall the original hardware. We'll go ahead and attach our nuts. And we'll tighten them down with our 1516 socket. Now remember when you tighten these down, you wanna make sure that the flange from the bolt is completely flat against the outside of the strut. Now we'll go ahead and reconnect our sway bar link and we'll tighten that down with our 17 millimeter wrench and our 18 millimeter socket. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our brake rotor and our caliper. And we'll secure our caliper using our original hardware. And we'll tighten those down with our 15 millimeter socket. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the plastic holding clips for our speed sensor line. And now you can repeat that whole process for the other side. Now, since we're on a lift, we're gonna be using a pole jack underneath our lower control arm here in the rear. If you're doing it on the ground, you can use the floor jack. You will need some support here once we get all the bolts removed. So let's start off by removing the two upper bolts for our shock mounts and then our brake bracket. All right, so we're gonna use our 18 millimeter socket to take off these two bolts at the top of our shock. And then our 13 millimeter socket to remove our brake line bracket. All right, now we're gonna remove these two 13 millimeter bolts here and here. 
on our rear subframe. And then we're gonna remove this 21 millimeter bolt here because we're gonna end up lowering our rear subframe. So at this point, you would definitely wanna make sure that you've got your jack supporting your lower control arm. Now remove this body mount bolt here. Now you will need a longer extension to get to this back one here as well. Now we can go ahead and lower our jack to release the tension on the spring. And once there's no more tension, you can go ahead and remove your jack. Now at this point, you will need an extra pair of hands and a pry bar. What we're gonna do is pry down on this lower control arm here while your buddy helps pull out the spring from the top. Now, depending on how tight your spring is in there, you may need a second pry bar to help lift it up from the bottom while you're pushing, pulling down on the control arm. Now we can install our rear coil Reusing the upper isolator, the lower insulator should still be in there, and just making sure that the end of the coil lines up with the isolator lock. And you want to do the same thing with the bottom coil as well when you put it into the insulator. Now we can use our pry bar to pry down on this lower control arm. Now that we've got our spring properly seated, we can go ahead and use our jack and go ahead and raise up that subframe and reinstall the original hardware. Now you wanna make sure that you start all these bolts by hand first, make sure that they're properly threaded. That way when you tighten them down, there's no cross threading and everything will be fine. So we'll start our back one first. And we'll go ahead and install our front body mount bolt first. Now you can install the two 13 millimeter bolts at the front of the bracket. And now we'll go ahead and tighten up our two body mount bolts using our 21 millimeter socket.
Now we can go ahead and tighten up our two 13 millimeter bolts with our 13 millimeter socket. Now we'll tighten up the rear bolt again with our 21 millimeter socket. Now at this point, you can go ahead and remove your jack so that we can install the top shock mount. Now we'll go ahead and attach our top shock mount. Noting, of course, that there are two alignment pins on the body itself, one here, one on the front one, and there's a groove at the top of the shock mount that that goes into. Now we'll go ahead and tighten those down with our 18 millimeter socket. Now we'll go ahead and reattach our brake line bracket with the original hardware. And we'll tighten that down with our 13 millimeter socket. Now that you've got one side complete, you can go ahead and do the other side and make sure when you're done, you torque everything down to factory recommended specifications, and then as soon as you get your wheels put back on, take it to an alignment shop and get an alignment done anytime you do suspension work. And that wraps up our review and install of the D2 Racing Pro Series lowering springs for the 15 to 23 Mustang without Magna Ride. Thanks for watching, and remember, for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com. <music>